Welcome back to the LNC Painter YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be working on this Tesla Model Y. Tesla's in the spray booth, masked up, ready to roll. We got a brand new door for the rear. We're gonna paint the quarter panel, blend the front door, obviously paint the door. And then we got little damage on this side. We repaired the fender and on the front, we're just gonna paint the fender. We're gonna try and keep the paint minimal, stay away from the door, stay away from the hood as much as we can, and just blend the color within the fender. This Tesla is gonna need some love, and hopefully, this thing will be looking better than new. I mean, honestly, Tesla paint jobs aren't the greatest from the factory, so usually, my work comes out a lot better than what comes in that's what's on the to-do list for today let's get started first things first is i'm gonna seal the new door because this is a factory e-coat for corrosion protection so to get the proper undercoat proper color match proper paint adhesion and just the right thing to do is seal the new parts first and then um, i'm not gonna apply any sealer on the body of the car because everything's primered and or painted already what i am gonna do is i'm gonna blend out a g shade gray dark gray base coat to cover up all these primer areas and feather out the edge that way my paint is gonna blend in a lot better as you know or if you didn't know the blues are very very transparent and these lines are gonna be very hard to cover no matter how many coats I put it's gonna be almost impossible because in the sunlight you'll see everything so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply my dark gray sealer on the door and then I'm gonna mix up a dark gray base coat to feather in all the primer lines I'm gonna dust some gray base coat here as well so then that way our color will for sure match with the new door and same here I'm just gonna add some gray base coat feathering all these lines and then blend out my color after that that's what we're gonna do first and then we'll get to mixing our color spraying our color and then doing our clear coat all right so our color code is pbsb and it's an ocean blue doing the prime variant and as you can see here it's asking for undercoat g7 for best results so we're going to mix our g7 sealer which is a dark gray we're going to mix uh, for one door we're going to mix eight ounces no, that's too much. We're going to mix six. Choose the car. This is our ECS 87 dark gray. I'm going to mix up six ounces, spray the door. And then while the door is drying, I'm gonna spray a gray base coat on the car to blend in all those primer lines. And the gray base coat we can mix up to be exact color as the sealer. That way, when we spray our color, on the new door and then on the blend panels the color will match since blue is so transparent if you spray the same color same mixture on a different shade of uh, gray it's gonna look different to you to everybody not just you that's why it's important to have the same undercoat on all the panels I'll show you guys how transparent the color is and how the color is gonna look different on each shade of gray so we're using a dark gray shade 
if I spray the same color over this, it's going to be completely different. It's going to be a lot lighter because you're going to see the undercoat. Essentially, the color, even though you're going to put four or five coats, you're still seeing what's underneath the color because it's so transparent. And uh, you'll never get the coverage to hide these lines. And I'll show you guys when I do my color. I'll spray my color on all four shades and then you can see. Very, very important. I used to struggle a lot to cover up all the primer lines, see how sharp these lines are. And I would be putting four, five, six coats and that line would still be visible. Until I learned that you have to do a blend out the sealer or the base coat in a gray. The reason I don't like putting sealer where my painted panels are is because it leaves um, a lot of overspray and texture where there is no sealer. So if I spray sealer on the edge of the door, it's going to throw that sealer pretty far. And with the base coat, I can contain it and keep it small, just blend it out and uh, then we can do our color. Sealer on this is no problem since we're doing the whole entire door, so that's the way I do it. That's the way that's been working for me. And for sealer, I use a Tecna Pro Light and I use a 1.4 tip. It's a little bigger than 1.3, so it lays out the sealer a lot smoother and cleaner and gives us a nice foundation for our base coat. All right. All right, while my sealer is drying, I mixed up a base coat in the same gray shade. So we're gonna apply the base coat to all the panels that need blending and smooth out all the primer lines.
All right, so I did my base coat and gray shade and you can see how much cleaner that looks, how much already it matches the rest of the paint and the blends are gonna be so much easier and smoother than transitioning from that sharp gray primer to the color. Same with the quarter panel. That looks a lot better than it did before. It already has the right proper G shade and it's a lot closer match to the paint. And we have a super smooth transition from gray to color. So it's gonna be a lot easier to cover. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna move on to mixing the base coat. All right, and before I'm doing my color, I'm also gonna do a clear base coat blender over all the panels just to smooth everything out and make sure everything's even. And then our color is gonna have a easier time blending into the base coat. Alright, so I got my base coat mixed up here, ready to go. I'm gonna use the same spray gun I used for my clear base coat blender. And we're ready to go. Let's do it.
All right, here we are. This is our first coat and it's dry and look how nice it's already looking. Due to the fact that I did a nice dark gray undercoat, blended the undercoat out and we're getting good coverage with our first coat. As you can see, it's not completely covering everything on the first coat. This is our first coat and you can see each of the G shades. So this is our dark and then it goes lighter. So you can tell that this color is transparent in fact and it's not gonna cover those lines. So the fact that I blended out the lines with my uh, gray base coat, it's getting covered in the first coat. Whereas this, if I left it as is, I would have to deal with this problem. And those sharp edges will never get covered with this color. Here's our door, looking good. And same with our fender. So everything's looking super good already on the first coat and I'm happy with that. Second coat will only make it better and then we can even everything out with our third and final control coat. So let's apply our second coat and um, go from there. Coat number two, looking good. Even better than the first coat. Looks like we got great coverage. Everything looks uniform and smooth. From what I see, and then uh, here's our fender. Silky smooth, nice clean transitions. Obviously, there's some overspray on the edges, but 
we're not gonna be too concerned about it. Color was pretty good for a perfect match. Next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my PSI to about 16 and we're gonna do our control coat overlapping about 75% and staying away from the panel about like a foot off the panel and just misting that final coat to get the metallics to lay out nice and smooth and get rid of any blotchiness or unevenness even though everything looks super good just one of the steps one of the final steps I do with all metallic colors All right, everything is finally dry and we're ready for our clear coat. I let the final uh, control coat dry, air dry for about 25, 30 minutes before I clear it. And this is what it looks like. Check it out. It looks super good, super clean. A very nice transition going from paint to no paint. Got it coverage nice silky smooth and uh, color should be looking good as well I love how the matte finish looks if you guys know me I love a matte finish so much that I paint my own cars matte but um we're going to add some gloss. I have my clear coat mixed up. I'm going to use my Iwata W400 and it's a 1.3. Love how this thing sprays as well. And um, we're going to apply our two coats of clear. Make this car look just like new.
All right, I just did my two coats of clear and as you saw, looking pretty good so far. So we're gonna let it dry, um, get it into assembly tomorrow and then uh, hopefully you guys can see it all assembled, put together. For now, let me show you guys what the spray out card looks like outside. see that the lines the four shades I definitely see the dark one if you look very closely at certain angles you can catch the fact that it's divided by four squares that's why we do our proper undercoat and then blend it out. All right, so we're gonna let the fan run for um, 25 30 minutes air it out get all the fumes out and then it can dry we can pull the car out and get it assembled all right my tesla is painted color is dry clear coat is dry and we're ready to pull the car out but first let's take a quick look see how she turned out Super clean, super glossy, clear laid out beautifully. Metallics came out perfect. So that's how I deal with my blues. That's how I paint my transparent colors. Number one thing I always, always recommend is doing your undercoat, blending that undercoat out, blending that proper G-shade undercoat or base coat out before applying your blues or reds any metallic transparent color it's gonna save you a lot of time a lot of headaches and it's gonna make your job look that much better hope you guys find this information valuable or entertaining and or both and i hope you guys enjoy watching my youtube channel thank you guys for tuning in if you like this kind of content don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit the thumbs up on this video comment below let me know what you guys think and that is going to be it for this one we'll see you guys on the next one Let's see Daniela.